Well, we know the Prime Minister Justin Trudeau likes a fight. He's got one on his hands, especially with Brad Wall, the Premier of Saskatchewan, over the government's plan to put a price on carbon, $10 a tonne, starting in 2018. I'm here with the Chairman of Advocates Data, Bruce Anderson. And Bruce, this is something that the, the Liberal government has telegraphed. Interesting that Trudeau announces it well. Catherine McKenna, the climate change environment minister, is supposed to be negotiating with the minister. So it was interesting to see the Liberals flex their muscles and the Prime Minister basically lay down the lumber on this issue. How does this play out for Justin Trudeau in terms of federal provincial politics? Well, to some degree, Evan, I think it's going to depend on how people talk about it one towards the other in the next several months. But I, I basically don't know that it's going to cause a furor, and I'm not sure that it was laying down the lumber. In a sense, I think what people have always wanted in Canada was more of a sense of compromise. They believe that compromise actually works for this country. And so they don't like divisive politics. If it looks like this federal action is going to be divisive and polarizing, then they'll kind of back away from it. But if it looks as though it is too fast for some people or too much for some, too little for others or too slow for others, in a, in a funny sort of way, that might be reassuring for people. And the fact that the provinces and the federal government are going to skirmish over this in health care isn't necessarily a sign of Canada breaking down. Some, in some ways, it could be a sign to mainstream voters that this is the way things are supposed to work. That's the way it's always worked. Yeah. yeah, and look, the Liberals always search for the Goldilocks moment. They want the NDP to say not enough, and they want the Conservatives to say too much, and then they say perfect. That's their defining as they, as they try to occupy the middle. But... Carbon's an interesting thing, pricing carbon. Brad Wall is going to say that this is a betrayal of uh, the idea of consensus. And you saw that unprecedented sort of Twitter war back and mm -hmm. forth between Justin Trudeau and Brad Wall. Does Wall end up being a kind of man alone on this? I know Nova Scotia and Newfoundland and Labrador are kind of with him on this, but it's only $10 a ton, $30 a ton in British Columbia. Can this, is this the sort of the hill to die on for him? You know, I think that all depends sometimes on the local electoral politics and what number he needs to call it a success for himself. But if you ask me, do I think four years from now or eight years from now, voters are going to be wanting politicians to run in, in, on a campaign to dismantle this kind of idea? I don't think so. So I think that politicians, you know, if, you, if you're a politician in Saskatchewan or Alberta, on some days it's easy to imagine a future yeah. where oil and, and natural gas is very bright. But if you're a, a citizen, even there, and certainly everywhere else, you look around the world and you see more clean energy sources. You see emphasis on renewability. You believe that wind and solar power are going to be more important. And you can actually see evidence, even in the vehicles that people are, are looking at and, and thinking about buying for the future, of a change that's been actually pretty dramatic just in the last five years. But does Trudeau, now he's given the green light to the LNG pipeline and facility in BC, now does he have to, everyone's going to look at by December, does he give the green light to the Trans Mountain? So if he gives a, 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 an oil pipeline to Tidewater, if he does that, I mean, is it incumbent on him to do that in order for the West to say, okay, you've done your carbon, give us, we need something to kickstart growth and it's that pipeline. Well, I think that most voters are going to be looking for him to make decisions that he thinks are the right ones for the long term of the country. And that might include a more pipeline capacity. People aren't expert on these things. They want to know that the values and the direction is in the right place. But they also, in our work, what we see people wanting is, is a kind of an ambitious plan, but a prudent plan. And for some people, that means a transition, not a radical change. For most right. people, it means transition, not a radical change. And if I were the Prime Minister, I would be thinking, you know, it's not necessarily up to the government to decide what the demand for our oil will be. As long as we're pushing alternatives, as long as we're nudging a shift in behavior and using pricing mechanisms and new technology as a big part of our plan, then a lot of voters might just say, well, it isn't necessarily the wrong thing to do to keep on deploying our resources and getting them to new markets. Certainly, well. we've hit a new phase of this government. They're, 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 this is the consultation phase coming to an end. They're an activist government. Uh, some of the idealists about hitting the Paris climate targets, they're going to leave these guys, but they're spending political capital now for sure, as you say. Uh, but they're, as Bruce says, they're trying to do it with that Goldilocks, get it in the middle moment. So we'll see what happens on the carbon. And then, of course, healthcare. So, lots to come.